And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Welcome in to RBLR Sports. My name is Musa, and let me tell you this. We're halfway through March, and things are getting better. The clouds of uncertainty are drifting away, and the sun is day by day shining its rays, letting us know we're still in this. We're back and ready to win it again. Well, it is with excitement that I have the pleasure of being accompanied by two of the most legendary Buccaneer fans. On my right, rocking the creamsicle, orange, Leroy Selman antique jersey, the one and only Santiago. How we doing? What's up, everybody? How are we doing today? Uh, RBLR Nation. Yeah, it's another, another, another week. You know, we're getting closer. Obviously, we have a lot of, you know, draft talk and also, you know, some exciting players that are coming back. So, you know, I'm down. I'm super, super excited. And, you know, I'm, this team is uh, – I like the way it's coming – like, you know, it's gelling together, you know, with, with all the players that are, that are coming back. And then, you know, we just have to add players. So, I'm down. Let's go, Bucks. Come on, boys. Let's do this. Amen to that. And on my left, with a custom Buccaneer cowbell and a Brady is back custom snapback, Ladies and gentlemen, our newest member of RBLR, Carter. Carter, how we doing tonight? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm chilling. Uh, you know, just uh, a long day of work. It's good to good to get on here and talk some bucks, you know, have some fun for sure. Let's get it. Yeah, I'm super excited with you. Uh, tell me about it. Well, listeners, before we dig in and talk about some Buccaneer football, uh, if you could do us a favor real quick and, you know, however you're listening to this, uh, you know, there's probably a follow button, a subscribe button or a like button. And that means, you know, whether you're on listening to YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, uh, we're all on there. And it would seriously mean a lot for us here at RBLR. But also, let me remind you that we are on social media platforms at RBLR Sports. All right, gentlemen, I got to say, it's just another week. I just feel like I'm just more and more happy ever since Brady came back. I'm ready to talk about some Tampa Bay football. And let me just start off by saying this, gentlemen. Uh, you know, I was looking around the articles. You know, everyone's like, oh, my God, so many free agent moves, et cetera, et cetera. Well, there's a few articles that, you know, rank, you know, the team's, uh, you know, free agency signings and whatever. And I saw a few articles that had the Buccaneers as one of the best. You know, like for example, like Sporting News had us at like number one. All right. So, you know, it just makes me think that, you know, I can't believe within what, two weeks, we just kind of made this complete random 180. You know, Jason Light's making the right moves. Overall, we're just making the right moves in the office. And uh, I'm super excited. Uh, let me start off by saying uh, that we have a special returner, uh, whether you want to call him regular season Lenny or playoff season Lenny. Ladies and gentlemen, Leonard Fournette is back, and, uh, you know, we'll start off with you, Santiago. How do you feel about that, um, you know, just with the whole kind of running back room looking a little bit uh, mysterious uh, with, you know, obviously Rojo and uh, Fournette being free agents? Uh, hey, at least we got Lenny back for sure, so how does that make you feel? That makes me feel very happy. You know, I've said, you know, in previous weeks that, you know, I would, I want to see Leonard Fournette back in the Bucks. you know, and it's, uh, it's super awesome that, you know, he's coming back, you know, on a three year contract, you know, it's not just a one year, you know, like Tom Brady has his magic man of just like, you know, bringing back players for, you know, multiple years. And it's, uh, it's, you know, I'm super stoked. And, uh, yeah, we're definitely – I saw today on, you know, on Twitter it said, you know, on Sunday Night Football on NBC, it said that they have the Bucks ranked the number one in Super Bowl favorites. So, you know, what, you know that just joy – has puts a joy in my heart, you know, because, you know, I want to see this team do well. I know we're going to do good. And, you know, you know, I cannot wait for week one, man. I cannot wait. What do you think, man? What do you think, Musabs? Listen, it, it makes me happy to know whether you go on any website or, you know, whether you just pull up the stat sheet that you see our team leaders, they're all with us. Uh, passing yards, Brady's back. Well, rushing yards, our leader, Leonard Fournette, is back. Receiving yards, the one and only Godwin is back. You know, we already got D. White. 
And uh, Mike Mohawk Edwards, uh, I mean, just with the interceptions wise, he was our leader. So it's just nice to know that, you know, we're, we're having our, our star veterans coming back. And um, honestly, I'm just super excited. I, I just can't believe this is happening. I'm really happy that we're making the right moves. I want to give a big shout out to the front office for making the right moves as well. Uh, but uh, I want to also just give a shout out to Leonard Fournette, you know, just with his interesting career. Uh, I guess the Jags didn't give him a chance. We gave him a chance. And year by year, he's getting better and better. Uh, and year by year, he's making a little bit more money. So there's also that too. But Carter, how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to bring back, you know, your leading rusher. For sure. Um, I think more importantly, what Leonard Fournette represents as, you know, coming back on that three year, three year deal. I mean, he's just he's a great pass catching back. He he had him and Brady seem to have a good chemistry, a good connection. Um, yeah, I mean, it just it's just kind of representing this continuation of the off season, just of. All right, let's get the band back together. You know, it's like that. I don't know if y'all have seen the movie The Blues Brothers, but, you know, it's like when Jake and Elwood, they just drive around and pick up their former band members. That's just kind of how that's just kind of how it feels right now. You know, it's just picking up the old dudes from last season and they're just like, hey, let's let's do it. Let's get this gig going. And uh, yeah, very exciting stuff for sure. Yeah. Imagine going to sleep like the night when Brady said he's coming back and then waking up to that kind of news. Imagine, you know, being a playoff contender and thinking, oh, my gosh, well, you know, we're about to dominate the Bucks because they're on our schedule once or twice. Well, wow, we're about to embarrass them. And then, boom, you wake up. Brady's back. A few days later, we're making more and more moves. It's intimidating for sure. But what's also intimidating, I'll tell you this, gentlemen, is uh, our our friend, Mr. William Golston, is back. All right, William Golston, our defensive end, is back. Uh, I got to say, you know, it's just kind of nice having another kind of veteran veteran coming back, a, a solid, you know, role player. Uh, you know, he wasn't shining here and there, but I, I was seeing him rack up some action for sure, and I, I'm definitely happy with that. Now, obviously, some people are saying, you know, with the kind of whole money-wise, now that's another story, but um, – I'm just happy to know that I guess more than anything, we have the experience. Clearly he's not just some random, you know, old guy. We're just keeping just out of respect. You know, it's like, listen, you uh, surely you're not our best player, but we want to keep you. I mean, what well, he racked up four and a half sacks uh, last season. Okay. Uh, had about, we yeah, have 15 tackles uh, assisting total. Uh, we had solo of 21. So kind of beast around here and there everywhere. Obviously not everyone can have a beautiful stat sheet. Uh, which is okay, but I'm happy to have him back more than anything. It's just kind of just the, the veteranship and the experience. But uh, let's start off. Uh, let's start off with you, actually, Carter. Uh, what are your thoughts on William Golston? Uh, just being the fact that he probably, I mean, I'll say this. Well, in my opinion, he wasn't like the oh my god, we have to keep him. Blah blah blah. He, you know, he's the talk of the town. There are clearly other guys who are definitely the talk of the town about who we want to keep more than anything. So the fact that we got this guy back, you know, what are your thoughts? And, uh, you know, was this kind of the right move? Yeah, um, it's definitely a good move. They needed to shore up the interior defensive line. Uh, no one knows what Ndamukong Suh's status is. He might not – he might just want to retire. I wouldn't blame him. He's had a very long, successful career. He recently had children with his, his, his wife and – you know, he might just want to be chilling at home with his kids. I mean, <laughs> who can blame him? Um, but, you know, bringing back Golston for his 10th season in Tampa. I mean, that's just – you don't you don't hear that a lot. You know, you don't hear that a lot of guys spending 10 seasons with one team, the team that drafted you in the fourth round. You know, it's, it's kind of a – it's been a remarkable run for him. And, um, you know, he's built a really successful career. I don't want to say out of nothing because the fourth round is, you know, still a – Decent draft choice, but it's not its not necessarily someone you expect to have that longevity of a career, especially as an interior defensive lineman. You just don't see that kind of, uh, that kind of long, continued success. Um, so sure, he's not, like you said, he's not the superstar. He's not the Shaquille Baird or the Levante David. He's not going to grab a bunch of headlines. But, you know, it's just about keeping the, keeping the group together. You know, the familiarity is a very important thing. And um, he certainly brings that to the, t to the field. So, um, you know, solid choice, solid, solid re-signing for sure. Yeah. That's the way I see. It. I think it's solid indeed. I mean, what the guy played 17 games, 
uh we did fairly solid as well so it's just nice knowing that we have a you know a good a good guy on our team because you never know what's going to happen things happen covid this that whatever injuries and uh the fact that we we see consistency with goldston is uh probably why i see why we re-signed him again but santiago maybe you feel the same way or maybe you don't how do you feel well gentlemen you know i honestly you know like tom brady is the general of this team right he has all of his you know weapons coming you know that he needs and definitely he needs protection you know what i'm saying so you know william golson you know he's a veteran man he can he can definitely do his job so whether you know he's um the um you know, and it's like, you know, what Carter said, you know, I, I agree. That's very odd to see a player be on one team, even though his position is not the most glamorous position, you know, because it is a, it is, it is a tough position, but like that he can be, you know, doing his job for 10 seasons and, you know, and, you know, and putting his grain of salt out on the, you know, and, and doing his job really good, you know, like, a lot of times players just move from one team to another, you know what I mean? Because they get players in the draft, they get players in free agency. They're like, ah, you know, you know, but you know, to, to be in a play in, in a team for, you know, that long 10 seasons, you gotta be doing something right, whether it's on the field and in, in the community also, you know, in the locker room, you know, teaching the young, teaching the young players that are coming in from college, you know, about how to be a professional you know, I mean, being a voice, you know, for your, for your, you know, so it's, you know, I'm super, I'm really, really happy that, that he's back as well. All right. All right. Yeah. I think we're all on the same page uh, more than anything, just having a solid dev piece returning and with his veteranship experience. I mean, yeah, 10 years, Carter, as you were saying, that's crazy. You know, I can't imagine spending 10 years on one team, but you must love the team or maybe the team loves you. I don't know, but I'll tell you who uh, who the Buccaneers are, are kind of loving these days, and they signed him. Uh, that's Logan Ryan from the New York Giants. Obviously, uh, with Whitehead being gone, uh, there was definitely a move needed to be made. And uh, listen, he he's not no honey badger or anything, but he's a solid pickup nonetheless. Quality depth, uh, especially um, – the fact that, you know, he's he's a solid veteran, too. He's not just some random young guy. He has the experience. He's a good leader. That's exactly what you need, okay? Now, I can't say, oh, he's a perfect replacement or, you know, a good replacement for Jordan Whitehead. You know, Jordan Whitehead is not Logan Ryan. Logan Ryan is not Jordan Whitehead. But I'm excited to see what he can do because uh, I've, I've seen how he's played uh, with the Giants, and uh, I think he was just looking for an opportunity. You know, same thing with, like, people like Shaq, Mason. Sometimes – there's just something that's telling you, you know what, let's, let, you know, let's do something. Um, also, I mean, I think with, you know, with Logan Ryan, he also uh, was working a little bit with the contract at the vet minimum uh, since the Giants still pay him. And it's, it's kind of a bargain from uh, the Bucks perspective. So, you know, we kind of like got him for free, which is also kind of a steal. So listen, we got Shaq Mason, Logan Ryan, both from up north, uh, both from AFC teams and now they're joining the NFC side. I like it a lot. But uh, Santiago, we'll start off with you, though. Uh, how do you feel about Logan Ryan? Um, I mean, I know, you know, we were talking in the past, you know, maybe we were trying to get Honey Badger, Tyrant Matthew, but uh, that didn't work out, unfortunately. Uh, but, hey, you know, we ended up with Logan Ryan, solid, solid guy. Uh, I believe he was a captain as well. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, but, you know, just something like that also just, uh, you know, increases his stock before he even plays with us. So, um, I'm, I'm just super happy, but Santiago, the floor is yours. Yeah. Well, I mean, Logan Ryan, you know, when, when he was released by the giants and, you know, we lost one of our top players, right. You know, and then we sign him, you know, everybody on social media was saying like, Oh, you know, you guys got a better player than when you let go. And then, then, then we're left, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, you always want a better player, of course, you know, um, and also Logan Ryan, you know, he's a native from my home state. You know, I was born in New Jersey. So, you know, like he plays for and he went to Rutgers. So it was like a local university that I, you know, that I had near me. Um, so obviously, I'm guessing, you know, when he when he played with the Giants, of course, you know, he's a, he's playing at home. You know, his friends and people and friends and neighbors and can, you know, 
college teammates and everybody can go and see him at, at MetLife, but hey, now he's coming down to the Sunshine State. You know what I mean? Like he's coming down. He has Clearwater Beach over here. He's got, you know, you know, Bush Gardens. You know, he's got, you know, downtown Tampa, downtown St. Pete, you know, but he's also coming to play football, you know, with one of the greatest, with the greatest of all time, you know, Tom Brady, of course. So, you know, and also he, he's, you know, he's done a lot. You know, he's a, he was the team's Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee last, you know, finished with a career high 117 tackles uh, this past season. Uh, the only two games he missed with the Giants uh, were because of COVID-19. So, you know, what I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's a reliable player. You know what I mean? You know, it's, you know, these past two seasons, these past two years, like everybody has been dealing with the pandemic, you know what I mean? And sports as well. And, now it's awesome to see fans back in the stadiums and, you know, and, uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, he's going to be, I, I, I really like the signing. So, uh, you know, I cannot, you know, <laughs> any signing that this run office does, Tom Brady puts a little, is saying something, Hey, we should, I believe we should get this player, you know, because he knows, you know, and uh, I'm excited. Can't wait to go for another Super Bowl. Hell yeah. And hey, I'll say this as well, gentlemen, add him to the list of former Patriots that played with Brady. You know, the dude went from uh, into free agency, actually the off season uh, after that, uh, you know, when the when the Falcons blew that 28 three lead and uh, the Pats ended up winning. So, yeah, definitely a good veteran piece if the Bucks are getting him for this cheap. But uh, a little also fun fact as well. He also picked six Brady's last pass. As a Patriot, I know it's a really, really kind of weird fact, uh, but someone brought it up to me because they're like, you know, Mustafa is real funny how the NFL works. You know, one second you're a teammate, then boom, you're an opponent, and then boom, back to being a teammate again. So I think that I think that's just kind of interesting, uh, and it makes me think that, you know, did did someone like Brady maybe have a slight factor in it, maybe try to find the right guys or whatever? You know, maybe you just maybe you just kind of drop the name, you know, in the conversation. Hey, you know, remember that guy Logan Ryan who, uh, you know, who, who picked me off or, you know, who, who played with me a few years ago here, there or something like that. So uh, I like it a lot. And uh, his look, his, as you said, Santiago, uh, the stats don't lie. Yeah, Walton Payton Manning, uh, Walter Payton, uh, you know, recipient or yeah, nominee. Um, all that just, you know, it's a real good resume. You know, if he's coming in for a job interview, I am nothing but impressed. But Carter, you tell me how you, how do you feel about this? Yeah, I mean, that was a beautiful way of putting it. Um, I I honestly forgot about the the last interception thing, but it it was crazy how, like you said, how the world works. You know, teammates at first, then. He picks off his last pass as a Patriot, and now they're back to being teammates again. But, yeah, he was he was a captain last year with the Giants. Him and Jabril Peppers kind of formed that, I don't know if you can call it a dynamic duo, but they were uh, one of the better safety pairings in the NFL. Um, definitely a strength of the Giants, which of which they did not have many. Um, but, yeah, he, he's a real versatile player. He's done a lot of things in his career. You know, he's lined up outside. He's lined up in the slot. And last the couple, last couple of seasons, he's been playing safety for the Giants. So I think with the Bucks' struggles with injuries last season with the secondary, you know, you saw Sean Murphy bunting went down. Pretty much every member of their secondary went down with an injury at some point during the season. So signing a guy like Logan Ryan allows them to kind of shift guys around, you know, if, if, if Sean Murphy Bunting, God forbid, gets hurt again, they can slide him into the slot, and then Mike Edwards takes over for the safety position. It's just a lot of things that you can do. There's a lot of things you can do with Logan Ryan, especially with his his versatile skill set, and um, that's not something that the Bucks have had recently as of late. You know, they haven't really had this kind of versatile piece. Obviously, Tyron Matthew would have been amazing. You know, the Honey Badger kind of provides that same versatile skill set, can do a lot of different things on the football field, but Logan Ryan is definitely a uh, not a bad uh, comp, you know, not a bad consolation prize for sure. Absolutely, I, I, you know, gentlemen, in my opinion, the way I kind of see it is, um, sometimes there has been moments where there is miscommunication or just a lack of awareness or whatever you want to call, it, maybe even lack of experience, because we have to throw in these random young guys as well. And sometimes it kind of bites us in the butt. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it kind of screws with us. It becomes super costly. Um, you know, like uh, you know, like our last game against the Rams. Uh, it was rather interesting to see something like that. To see Cooper Cup get the ball twice in a row like that. So, 
the fact that, okay, you know, Whitehead's gone, uh, you know, that sucks, but it is what it is. But, hey, listen, uh, yeah, at least we picked up, uh, you know, a veteran, Logan Ryan. And uh, I think I think he's definitely uh, going to be a, a huge, huge role player for sure on the on the defensive side as well. Um, if anything, he's going to be that communicator uh, just with his leadership experience. So uh, the stats are impressive. Uh, but what, what makes me a little bit more happy is just his experience and his leadership. Uh, but more than anything, I just hope that everything works out and everything clicks together because you know, just because you're amazing doesn't mean, or just because you're good doesn't mean you're just going to click well with everyone else. Uh, so it may take a little bit of time, but uh, I'm nothing but optimistic. Now, gentlemen, um, I'm going to say this and uh, call it cocky or whatever, but I'm feeling optimistic against our NFC South opponents. I really am. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Panthers, the Saints, the Falcons. Uh, and that's also – you know, in regards to what kind of moves they're making this offseason so far, uh, maybe we're thankful and maybe we're just doing some real special things. Because honestly, you know, when I'm looking at the moves they're making and then I'm looking at the moves we're making, you know, there's a reason why we are the Super Bowl champs or, well, you know, about yeah two years ago. But there's a reason why, you know, we're looking way more hot than these guys. Uh, we'll start off with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, so I'll just kind of go over uh, a few uh, the the kind of updates, uh, who's – who's here, who's not, and then we can kind of dig deep on, uh, you know, who do you want to elaborate on, which ones are more costly, uh, and, you know, uh, I guess the effect of it. So, for example, uh, Hassan Redick, uh, defensive end, edge, uh, he is now headed to the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, so now he's gone. All right, so now, and along with that, uh, we also have uh, some people who are also kind of joining uh, because uh, of some, you know, moves to be made. And that's, you know, if anything, it's, it's really the whole quarterback situation. And I say that because uh, Austin Corbett, right guard from the Rams, is now headed uh, to Carolina. And along with that, Bradley Bozeman from the Ravens is also uh, joining the Panthers as well. Uh, both of these guys had a lot, a lot of presence on the field. So it makes sense uh, as to why they needed to pick him up because, again, the whole QB situation – uh, the next one I wanted to kind of dig deep on is uh, Xavier Woods, safety from the Vikings, will be joining the Panthers. Another defensive piece, Damian Wilson uh, from the Jaguars, will be joining the Panthers. Uh, so those are those are the guys I have. So I guess really anything, this is really Hassan Reddick is really the big guy who's uh, headed out of Carolina. Uh, and uh, I don't know if they have found the exact right piece or right hole to fill. But, you know, they picked up some defensive pieces. and. Uh, more than anything, the offensive pieces. Uh, so my first question, we'll start off with you, Carter. Uh, looking at the QB situation right now, Cam Newton, Sam Darnold, um, looking a little interesting. They need all the help they can get, so I see why they got Corbett and Brad Bozeman. Uh, but, you know, talking about the quarterbacks, the O-line, and then what the quarterback can do with his O-line, what do you see uh, for the Carolina Panthers' future? Yeah, uh, I sigh because the Carolina Panthers' future, especially for this season, is a little bleak. It's it's very much depressing. <laughs> um, you know, they traded for Sam Darnold last year. They gave up the the draft capital for it. But more than that, they accepted his fifth-year option, which makes me kind of nauseous just thinking about. He is, you know, he was part of the first-round draft class of Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen, who were all picked before Lamar Jackson. And, of course, Lamar Jackson has won an MVP, and the other three guys are no longer with the teams that drafted them. So, you know, go figure. Um, but, you know, Sam Darnold's fifth-year option is for $18.8 million. That is absolutely redonkulous for a guy that is that, ugh, just mind-boggling. So, they, you know, they've been linked with the Baker Mayfield story because of the Deshaun Watson trade to the Browns. Obviously, Baker Mayfield, you know, he's gone. But the Panthers have said no. You know, they have been – it's been reported that they are not interested in Baker Mayfield at all. And that may be like, well, isn't Baker Mayfield better than Sam Donald? Sure, but, you know, Baker Mayfield's going to be making 20-plus million too because he's on that fifth-year option as well since they were both on that same draft class. So they aren't about to pay two quarterbacks 38 combined million dollars to be blah. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, it's tough. I mean, losing Hassan Reddick is also huge for that defense because him and Brian Burns off the edge were kind of disgusting. That led to them having such a great defense. Um, their offensive line definitely needed some revamping. I mean, you could have put, you know, anyone back there and they would not have had success with the offensive line that they were putting out there. So it's just kind of, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say too easy dubs for the Bucks, but yeah, too easy dubs for the Bucks this year against the Panthers. I agree with you. Honestly, uh, the way I see it is um, Sam Darnold kind of reminds me uh, of, of the Carson Wentz Indianapolis Colts situation with uh, Jonathan Taylor. Now, obviously, um, you know, uh, McCaffrey was out this past season, so uh, Hubbard had to pick up. But it, it seems to me more like, at least if anything, they're looking for at least like a, like a system quarterback, someone who can at least make things happen. And then, you know, let the star, a.k.a. McCaffrey, really do the real work or whatever, or, you know, rack up the points. Clearly, uh, I don't see that being the case, um, as you said it. Or I don't know if he's, I mean, it's not even a word, but, it, I mean, yeah, bleh, that's, the, that's the best way to put it, too. Uh, and then again, yeah, even with uh, Cam Newton, didn't see anything special because there was something going on. He definitely would have been a lot, more, uh, a lot bit more of the talk. So... The way I see it uh, is they're not even making any moves. You know, they're not making any moves with the wide receivers or anything. It's kind of just like, all right, well, let's see, you know, fine. I guess we have a solid lineup, you know, uh, with a wide receivers. And then our running back is, you know, Christian McCaffrey, uh, who's who's been out. So I don't even know how his future is looking now, too. You know, you really don't know, uh, you know, with these injuries. So it just makes me think, you know, fine. Maybe here and there, if anything, they might be, be they might be able to put up a dog fight, you know, during the games when we play them. But then again, honestly, it could also turn out to be real embarrassing for them uh, because again, they I wouldn't even call it a rebuilding phase. They're in this phase where it just appears to me that they make sometimes the right moves and then they miss out on opportunities to make you know other right moves and. It's not that they make the wrong moves, but then again, they do as well. Um, kind of just, I don't know. Honestly, just a huge mystery mark. You know, the way I was feeling with the Buccaneers like three weeks ago with, you know, Brady not being with us and a lot of these guys being a free agent. I was like, oh, my gosh. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised with anything. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised with anything with the Panthers. But whatever surprise comes, uh, I don't see anything really coming out of it. But Santiago, maybe you disagree or – Maybe you agree with me. How do you feel? Yeah, I honestly see that, you know, the Bucks are the favorite. This is the probably, you know, the first time I could possibly say in a while that, you know, that the Bucks have been fav- our favorites to, you know, just win the, you know, their division with, with possibly no issue, you know, with no problem, you know, on what we're doing compared to every other team in our division, right? Um, yeah, I mean, like – like what Carter said, you know, they have Sam Darnold and, you know, and then they, I remember when I was seeing uh, last year and last season when, uh, when Cam Newton came in, he's like, I'm back, you know, like, as you know, and, you know, he went, he took his team to the Super, he took this team to the Super Bowl. You know, I remember when he played Super Bowl 50, when they went to Super Bowl 50 versus uh, Peyton Manning, you know, the Carolina Panthers, but, you know, they lost that game. So, you know, it's still, you know, I agree with Carter with what he said. You know, I believe this is going to be two wins. You know, like you know here in Carol, you know here in Tampa, and also over there in Carolina. So, I mean, even people up there possibly at this moment with what's with the you know with what they got, you know, they're probably not that happy. You know, they, you know they love their team, of course, but you know they would love to they would love to be like, why couldn't we have? Why couldn't the Bucks not have Tom Brady? Maybe it could have been a more even you know, game or something, you know, like, but, you know, I mean, you know, I, I'm, let's go Bucks. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm super happy. Like, I'm, I, I believe we can, you know, with our division, we can possibly go undefeated, you know what I'm saying? Because of a lot of things that are happening. So um, I can't wait for all these wins, man. I'm super stoked. Yeah. I'm super stoked as well. Um, yeah. I mean, listen, uh, with all due respect, you know, yes, they, you know, they, they, they got some guys, you know, safety linebacker. They got, you know, they got two guys for the offensive line. But um, if anything, I may see a slight improvement. But there is still a huge difference between the Buccaneers and the Panthers. And uh, 
as, as both of y'all have said it, I think it's going to be evident when we win both games. Uh, on the other hand, uh, things are looking a little bit different north of Florida. And that is Atlanta. All right. A lot of a lot of moves going on, or honestly, the big move is the whole quarterback situation now. Uh, gentlemen, Matt Ryan is headed to the Indianapolis Colts, and now Marcus Mariota is now joining the team. All right. Uh, I, I kind of wanted to dig dig deep on that. Um, you know, what are your kind of thoughts? Uh, you know, we'll start out with you, Santiago. Do you think do you think Matt Ryan was the issue, or you know, what was the really what was the real reason behind you know you know him saying you know what uh, maybe I got to find another another team or something? Because I will say is that uh, the the Falcons management did explicitly state to him that they are looking. Uh, at the quarterback market, um, you know, obviously they're not saying, hey, dude, you got to go or, hey, you know, we're, we're going to find you a nice little backup. But they're just saying, hey, listen, uh, we're going to the QB market and uh, don't be surprised if we come back and uh, have to take you back to customer service and return you so you can go ahead on somewhere else. Uh, and that's the, the that's the way it turned out. So Matt Ryan to the Colts. Um that's a, that's another story, I guess. Maybe, hopefully, maybe Matt Ryan will get more opportunities to shine. I mean, he's got Jonathan Taylor, but on the other hand, Marcus Mariota. Um, I'm going to keep it real with you, gentlemen. I I, I haven't seen uh, too much, too much from Mariota uh, this last season, or nothing really super special. Uh, but perhaps maybe y'all disagree. No, I remember his rookie season, especially when he played against us. Uh, uh, I remember he, he he did fairly solid against us, so uh, that was rather interesting. But I don't know, Carter. Uh, you know, Carter Santiago. You know, what do we think about this? We can kind of just all all just kind of dive into it. Maybe you know, Carter, go ahead and go on first. Uh, Marcus Mariota, is this guy special or not? Is this guy gonna make a difference? You know, surely they're they're making some other moves, but minus well, you know, I'll take that back. They're not making any other big drastic move, all right. Uh, other than okay, yay, yeah, they got you know Cordero Patterson back, but other than that, you know, they've lost people. Uh, they lost Ryan. They got Mariota, and uh, based on today, uh, how do you feel about playing the Atlanta Falcons? I feel great as always for the past like three years, pretty much since Tom Brady broke them. With that 28-3 to thing, it has been wonderful to play the Atlanta Falcons. And it will continue to be wonderful to play the Atlanta Falcons for at least the next two or three years. Because they, oh God, I mean, as bad as the Panthers look, the Falcons look just as bad, if not worse. I mean, they they spent this draft pick last season on Kyle Pitts, that poor guy. He's going to, you know, waste the first four or five years of his career you know, catching passes from God knows who. Marcus Mariota, uh, I mean, <laughs> him and Jameis, they've both been such huge disappointments, you know, for the first and second overall picks. You know, they were just, whew. Um, but, you know, it's good to see Matt Ryan go to a contender. Um, he certainly wasn't the solution at the quarterback position for Atlanta, but he also certainly wasn't the problem. Um, they have just a laundry list of issues. You know, they're – their edge, their pass rush is non-existent. Their linebacking core is okay, but not really anything to write home about. They don't really have any quality safeties. Their secondary sucks. Their offensive line is bad. They're running, you know, Cordell Patterson's fine, but you know, Calvin Ridley spent all of last season just not playing, you know, and then he gets the suspension for the gambling problem. So not only did they lose all these guys to free agents, free agency, they also lost Calvin Ridley for a season, and they lost the opportunity to trade Calvin Ridley for a season. So. It's just, yeah, yeah. I mean, another situation I can't really see the, the Bucks losing the Falcons either game this season. Um, it's, yeah, it's, ugh. Yeah, it's looking ugly. Santiago, what do you think? Yeah, gentlemen, well, you know, when, you know, that's right. When uh, Ridley, you know, he got, he suspended for a whole year for, for gambling on sports. There was a, there was another player back in the, a long time ago, obviously a different sport, who did the same thing, uh, Pete Rose, right? But you know he got he's not in, he's not going to the Hall of Fame in baseball, so you know what I mean, but um, obviously we're two different eras, right? Um, but I mean Matt Ryan, man, he's a you know he's a super he never I'll say this he never he took his team to the Super Bowl, yes, did he psychologically get 
you know, messed up possibly. You know, I don't want to, you know, after Brady, you know, um, you know, beat him like, because I honestly thought when I saw that game, the, you know, with, um, with the Falcons and the Patriots, like, I thought like everybody else saw around the nation, you know, during, before halftime that, you know, they were going to dominate. They were going to go and win a Super Bowl, you know, first one for Atlanta. And look what the greatness of Tom Brady did. And, you know, I don't think maybe he wanted to play Tom Brady, you know, two times in a, in a season. You know, he probably wanted to go, you know, refresh his mind somewhere else in a different division, you know, different opponents, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, so it's like, you know, I mean, again, this is going to be another two wins, you know, like, and that's, I, I've driven, I drove about a few months ago, I went up to Atlanta, you know, just went on a little weekend trip, you know, and I drove past, you know, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, that's a gorgeous stadium, like, that stadium should be packed all the time, you know, they have like a huge Atlanta, you know, Falcon statue in the front of the stadium. I mean, that stadium is so gorgeous. I've never been inside of it, but I've done, you know, I've seen pictures and obviously on TV. And to have that stadium not filled because the team is not doing so well and people are just possibly frustrated on seeing just an average team, you know, it's, and, you know, people don't want to, you know, invest their money on a team that's kind yeah. of average, you know, like, yeah. like that's, that, that's very, very tough, you know, because, you know, they want to see like a move like they're probably thinking like, look down the road in Atlanta from Tampa. It's only a seven hour drive. You know, people in there are down, up in Atlanta, like thinking like seven, seven hours south of us. Why are they getting the goat? Why are they getting all these players? You know what I mean? Like, I guess it just you know, comes they, down to, you know, what kind of moves uh, the office makes or I guess it comes down to, you know, what the players are interested in. Exactly. Uh, so on top of the, on top of, you know, we, they got rid of Matt totally Ryan, agree. but obviously they had to find the replacement. So they got Mariota. Uh, Dante Fowler, uh, a, a key player on their team, uh, is headed to the Cowboys. So that's rather unfortunate for them. Uh, but they did gain uh, a right tackle, Matt Gano, for, uh, who, oh, actually, I take that back. Uh, he is also leaving. He is headed to the Giants as well. Totally mixed my uh, my words over there. Uh, he, so he's leaving as well. He's headed to the Giants. Now, the good thing, though, is, okay, yeah, Corderell Patterson stays. Uh, but... I mean, yeah, I mean, I got a lot of respect for that guy. That dude's that dude's good, but um, there's only so much he can just do himself. You know what I'm saying? Especially if there's only one threat. You know, we contained. You know, we knew there was only one threat uh, on the Colts, or one really big threat. That was Jonathan Taylor, and we contained him for the majority of the game. So I don't see why we can't just do that again. Because, uh, yeah. They got Kyle Pitts, which is great, whatever, you know, good player. But then again, I feel bad for him, Carter. Uh, I see where, I see where your head's at. But, yeah, they got rid of Hayden Hurst, you know. Uh, he's headed to the Bengals. Maybe he's looking for another championship. He's looking to be on a championship kind of team. So he's gone. So just imagine uh, – just imagine you – yeah, you, you, got no, you got no more Gage, no more Ridley. Pitts gets injured. So it's just Marietta. Uh, Patterson, and then, oh, well, no, no more Hayden Hurst either. Uh-oh. So now what do you do, you know? And on top of that, they have another uh, key linebacker. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to try to pronounce his last name uh, correctly. Uh, Oluwakun. Uh, he is headed to the Jaguars. So just think about that. Look at it. Matt Ryan, Coles, Dante Fowler, Cowboys, Matt Gano, you know, starting right tackle to the Giants, Cordero Patterson. Okay, he stays. Yay. Hayden Hurst. Well, he's gone. All right. Olua Kuhn to the Jags. And the one and only Russell Gage is now with Champa Bay. So, uh, sure, they, they kind of pick up maybe a depth piece here or there. Um, and it just honestly – with what they have, I'll, I'll say this, gentlemen, because uh, some of the names I even forgot from the top of my head, uh, it, it's going to look like some of these depth pieces that they've attained from other teams uh, may just turn out to be starters. Uh, and for that reason, again, uh, it's just going to turn out to be ugly. Um, and that's kind of just the, the feeling I have just with the Falcons. Um, I don't know. You know, it's just, it's just going to be another kind of year. You know, with all due respect, uh, surely they, you know, they have some uh, decent players on that team, but uh, there's only just so much that they can do. And the fact that they're getting rid of a lot of, you know, kind of key players, uh, I don't blame those players, but, you know, it sucks for them. So, 
that's really about it. But, you know, I'm going to say this, and I'm sure the listeners are also anxiously waiting. Oh, Musab, okay, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about the Falcons and the Panthers. We care about our rival, all right? The ones that, you know, I don't know. They always find a way to, you know, get the win, uh, especially going against Brady. Yeah, they were 4-1 and one against Brady. Uh, the only time they lost was obviously during that little Super Bowl run that we had. But they got some interesting moves as well. Um, not uh, too many, but I will say uh, they're getting rid of their left tackle. Teron Armstead, uh, he is headed to the Miami Dolphins, who are also making plenty of other moves that we'll, you know, we'll drop in real quick. Uh, but who they lost as well, uh, which was a key player, kind of a kind of a little whitehead Logan Ryan, s- similar situation, if that's what you want to call it. Maybe you all disagree. Um, I will say, though, it's kind of interesting. Both of them, their names start with Marcus. Uh, yeah, so Marcus Williams was on the Saints, safety on the Saints. He is now headed to the Baltimore Ravens. But on the other hand, uh, I guess Whitehead uh, took his place uh, on the Jets. And uh, Marcus May, safety from the Jets, is now headed to the Saints. So, um, and then on top of that, uh, if you have, if you don't know already, uh, Mr. Crableg, let's eat them W's, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Jameis Winston is staying. All right. Uh, that's also rather interesting just because uh, people are getting real fired up when he was supposedly, you know, doing pretty well against us the last time. And then, you know, when they had to toss in Simeon and then that was a whole other story, rather embarrassing. Uh, I want to say, though, you know, no kind of updates for some other key starters like Tracon Smith or Quan Alexander, even a solid depth piece like P.J. Williams, uh, he's being a free agent. Uh, no update either. Those are kind of the ones that I'm like, okay, uh, those are definitely ones that are definitely uh, I, I want to consider looking into later on. But um, – I don't know. Yeah, so they got rid of their starting left tackle, Carter, and Santiago. They picked up a safety because they got rid of a safety, and then boom, Jameis stays. So with those three kind of guys, uh, you know, how does this make you feel? Um, I mean, you know, we're still waiting. You know, I'll say this, listeners and gentlemen, you know, we're still waiting on a lot, a lot of other players uh, as well to kind of decide what they want to do, whether they're going to resign or go some other team. But um, – these are definitely the big ones that have already made their moves or made their decisions. And uh, I want to know Santiago with you, first of all, you know, how, how does this make you feel uh, that Jameis Winston is staying? Uh, and, um, you know, they're making, they made a little quick move right here with the safety unit. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I just want to say that it's just like, I don't see much going on with the saints, but then again, um, they always seem to give us a dog fight and, uh, that continues to be something that makes me scratch my head. But Santiago, maybe you ha- maybe you have the answer for me. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, Musab, pretty much, you know, Janice Winston, you know, he played for us. You know, he did it. He did. Uh, he had NFL history with us. You know, thirty touchdowns, thirty interceptions in one season. So, you know, what I'm saying he's inconsistent. So, uh, you know, he's. Uh, you know, even though he did well at Florida State, you know, when he was at college, you know, like the, like I said, like I've always said before, the NFL is a, a, a different beast, you know, and uh, he's he's been kind of an, I believe I would say maybe an average quarterback, you know, he's not, you know, like I remember he would always say, like I was when he was with the Bucks that, you know, he was very excited about like I'm gonna win a Super Bowl for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm gonna bring in Lombardi, you know, and in the beginning, you know, because of his success at Florida State and. You know, there's a lot of Florida State fans and, you know, obviously Gator fans as well, but there's a lot of Florida State fans and faithful in the Tampa Bay area and in the state of Florida, you know. A lot of people who liked Jameis in college other than his off-the-field, you know, you know, issues, right? But, you know, some people as a player, they like them. Other people don't. So, you know, other than that, like, I do still think – I do still believe that we're going to get two wins out of this, you know, in New Orleans and in Tampa. So, I don't see an issue. I, I honestly – is because you know with Drew Brees, man, Drew Brees, he's 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 one of the great quarterbacks. You know what I mean? He won a Super Bowl for for New Orleans, like right, you know, right after right. Katrina. Santiago, right after Katrina. Santiago, you have to remember though they they beat us without Brees. They beat us uh, with I know an injury. I agree. In and you know, some random guy You're named right. Simeon came on in and yeah embarrassed us. So um, yeah. 
I, I only want to say that just because, believe me, I want to say every single year that it's going to be a nice, <laughs> easy 2-0, right. uh, you know, win season uh, against the Saints. But I don't know. It, it always seems interesting. Uh, the only thing that I, I want to say that uh, I, I respect out of Jameis Winston is that he, uh, toward his end, ending, ending years uh, with the Buccaneers, he did. He did a great job, you know, racking up the touchdowns, uh, you know, racking up the passing yards. But, 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 just imagine this. Just imagine you go for a job interview, Carter and Santiago. Yeah. Hey, you look at your resume. Oh my God, beautiful. You have a four point oh GPA, aka. Oh, you know how to throw touchdowns. Beautiful. Oh, but oh, we're doing your background check, sir. And we just realize that you have like. 25 DUIs, a.k.a. like 25 interceptions, okay? So uh, I think every job interviewer, no matter how great your GPA is or how great your resume is, the fact that you had like 25 DUIs, for example, a.k.a. 25 to 30 interceptions, Jameis Winston, that's worrying. So I got to say, you know, we just honestly, we just need to go after him. We need to go after the whole team. As kind of simple as that sounds, um, this is how I feel. Uh, one side of me is uh, interested to see what kind of moves to be made. But to summarize it all for me, uh, the Saints, I still need to see what kind of – well, I'll say this. To summarize it, Saints are the only team in the NFC South that I'm really looking at the moves in regard to the Falcons and the Panthers as well. Uh, don't have too much regard to them. But – uh, other than that, though, yeah, Jameis Winston is back. That's interesting. Uh, but I don't know. He's, he's had a really weird past. And honestly, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised for anything. Uh, the only thing that kind of irks me is the fact that we can't just dominate offensively every single time we play them, uh, other than that one time we beat them. But Carter, you know, after after everything that Santiago and I have said right now in regards to the New Orleans Saints, you know, how do you feel uh, with, you know, who they got rid of and the fact that, you know, yeah, they got Jameis Winston uh, back for a year? Well, um, yeah, definitely don't disagree with anything y'all have said. Uh, I think one thing that, that we maybe are overlooking is uh, Sean Payton's gone. He's not their head coach anymore. Um, you know, he's retired, so they have to replace him with Dennis Allen. And I thought – that was just, uh, uh, I mean, he's he was their defensive coordinator, and their defense has been what they've been hanging their hat on for the past couple of years. Um, you know, he's done a, a tremendous job. He's turned it around because they had a few years there in the Breeze era where they were breaking records for most yards given up in a season, and uh, it was a rough stretch. But his his head coaching record, he's 8-28. and 28. You know, I mean, it's just it, they were preaching continuity and, you know, just trying to, keep keep the you know keep the good vibes going or whatever but i don't know um regardless if we're focusing on the free agency acquisitions you know marcus may replacing marcus williams marcus williams was is mostly known for missing that tackle in the minneapolis miracle on stefan diggs and rightfully so because that cost the saints a chance at a super bowl but um other than that he was an amazing zone corner uh safety excuse me he was really tremendous in coverage so they, that's a big loss for them. Marcus May is a decent enough safety, but he's definitely a downgrade. Um, they have not made any moves adding to their wide receiver room, and that is incredibly concerning because they are going to have to run out. Michael Thomas, who knows how he's going to return off of his you know weird injury history this past season. But they have him and then Marquez Callaway and Traquan Smith, and that is – or not Traquan Smith, excuse me, a Deontay Harris, the return specialist. That is not a good receiving core. They don't really have a tight end. They could have tried to. They could still try to sign Odell Beckham Jr. or Jarvis Landry. Those are both Louisiana natives. You know they could come back home. But yeah, losing Teron Armstead, obviously, you know he's a Pro Bowl level tackle, an elite tackle. So losing him is a huge loss. Um, yeah, I mean, but it's the Saints that, like you said, uh, like y'all have been saying, they they have been a thorn in the Buck side for the whole history of the Bucks. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes. That It's definitely not going to be a Kate walk. It never is with the Saints. So, uh, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how things go. I like that. I like that. And, I mean, I will say this before, yeah, before Brady uh, even joined us as well. I think everyone was looking at the NFC South like, what the hell is going to happen with that, you know, with that little division over there? Because 
at one point we were all looking weird and kind of mysterious and iffy, you know? So um, if, if anyone's uh, a close second, uh, it would have to be the Saints, of course. Uh, so that's okay, though, um, because what's also another close second uh, is my is my old jersey, uh, my old Buccaneers jersey that I used to rep here and there. Then I picked up a D White Super Bowl edition jersey, and you know that's all I'm rock. That's all I'm rocking. I'm always rocking the new threads. I said out with the old, in with the new. And listeners, liking and subscribing is free. But if you need some new threads like I did, you can support this podcast by heading on over to shop.rblrsports and checking out all the cool designs we got for you. Let me tell you something. We got shirts in the colors of our beloved teams. All right. We got designs honoring the football team, the hockey team, the soccer team, and the baseball team. All right. And let me bless you with a little promo code because, you know, we love our listeners. And I hope you love us as well. And that is our promo code is Cannons, C-A-N-N-O-N-S. And that is for 10% off your order. There's a link right in the description. So it would mean a lot. And uh, again, thank you as always. All right. We are going to make a little bit of a transition. You know, we we talked our talk about the NFC South. Uh, Definitely some rather similar feelings, uh, I can say. But now... Now it's time to talk about the draft. All right. Now this week uh, we're we're pinpointing on the position, the running backs. All right, that was our next, uh, the next position on our priority list. And uh, you know we'll we'll start out with you, Carter. Uh, with all these changes, uh, you know, with all the moves we've been making, playoff Lenny's back, Brady's back as well. So you know it's not like we have to count on the running back because you know if we had Trask or Gabbert, it would be a whole different situation. But with all these changes, is this still number five on our list? Because, you know, we have many other needs, but I don't know, man. You know, you see maybe, you know, you see us wanting to snag, you know, uh, a, a good running back maybe in, you know, the earlier rounds. Or is this still kind of a, a, a number four or five on our list? Yeah, I mean, this is definitely number five. And with Leonard Fournette returning, I, I'm tempted to say it might even not even not be a priority at all i don't even know if they spend a draft choice on a running back at this point um i think they have a lot of faith in Keyshawn vaughn they spent a third round pick on him and he's shown flashes of potential as a uh you know a feature back uh but they need a pass catcher you know and that's not really something that you can draft because you know the the whole college game you know running backs are counted on just so heavily in the running game that they're very rarely polished they very rarely do they come into the nfl as polished pass catching backs so that's something that maybe they go into free agency for um but if they were to say okay we need we want to have a a four man running back room you know if they want to carry four running backs on their roster which with fournette being able to you know catch passes out of the backfield and be an every down back there's maybe not as much of a need but if they were to say that um my my big favorite with with this draft class is uh, Zaquandre White out of South Carolina. He's real shifty, real change of pace guy, especially with Fournette being such a power guy. Um, he's just great coming out of the backfield. I think he's a huge sleeper, and um, you know he's just really great with the ball in his hands in the open field. And I think that guys like that, you know, are just they're not necessarily easy to find. You know, so. Um, yeah, I, I love that guy. I think White would be a huge addition. But like I said, I don't know that the Bucks need to invest a draft choice at the running back position because, like you said, they have so many other needs. They could use some depth on the offensive and defensive line. They could use some depth in the secondary. So they just have a lot of needs. You know, they might spend a fourth or one of their seventh round picks on right. the running back position. But yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, thinking about it now, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, we got playoff Lenny, so it makes me think, you know, yeah, how much do we want to prioritize it? Uh, and um, I don't know. I was just thinking, you know, obviously I'm kind of on the same page. You know, it's not something we need to prioritize at all. But there's always this kind of thought in my head is, you know, how can we kind of find that hidden gem? I know clearly, you know, we're not going to, you know, just get a running back no matter what in the first or second round. But maybe we could snag a steal, you know, in the third or fourth round you know, kind of a little risky move or something. Um, you know, even, you know, even when people said when we got Kyle Trask, everyone's like, oh, my God, 
you, you, you're telling me you, you got this guy in the second round. Oh, my God. You know what's going to happen? And well, we don't know what's going to happen because the guy hasn't played yet. But that's another story. So, first of all, uh, appreciate, yeah, Zachondre White. I definitely like that. And I'm, I'm kind of on the same page. Uh, yeah, we have a dominant running back. Now looking, obviously, a little bit more of a, like a pass catcher kind of style running back. Someone, you know, who can kind of come, uh, who can come clutch in the, you know, in the third in the third down or something like that. Uh, Santiago, did you have anyone in mind? Uh, you know, who's the, who's the kind of first guy from the top of your head, you know, looking at the draft class that you thought, you know what, maybe, maybe, maybe we can snag this guy, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, like what, you know, what you guys, what you gentlemen are saying right now, you know, it's uh, with running back, you know, with Leonard Fournette signing, you know, you're right. It may not be me, but, you know, it's, it's such a, you know, it's such a ground and pound type of a type of position in this sport that, you know, I look here and you definitely have some pretty good running backs, you know, like Zamir White from Georgia, you know, anybody pretty much from the, from the, from the SEC, you know, they're, they're fantastic players. So, you know, he's ranked number 15 uh, as, you know, out of, you know, compared to like, you know, the, um, the running back that Carter just selected, that was a, the Quandre White, you know, out of South Carolina, you know, on the DraftKings, uh, you know, top running backs, you know, he's number, you know, Zaquandre White is number 19, and Zamira White is, uh, let me see, they got the same last name, maybe they're related, you know what I mean, I don't know, right, they went to different colleges, right, but, uh, so, you know, I could definitely, you know, see not really a draft, you know, obviously there are times where, after the draft, you know, undrafted free, you know, undrafted picks, you know, they get they get picked up, you know, by because they were they impressed during the, you know, during the combine, you know, players, you know, the teams actually like them. So, you know, we can definitely, you know, and I agree, offensive line, defensive line, you know, guard, you know, some offensive tackles. And we can definitely look at, at somebody like that, you know, like uh, – we can so, so you would you so you would probably agree with uh, Carter and my even I uh, that this is yes. still kind of number five on our priority list, huh? Exactly, okay. that is correct. Yeah. Right on, right on. Well, you, hey, l- listen, you brought up uh, yeah, you brought up Zamir White. Uh, I only only want to bring him up just because it's just like honestly, I would I would like to I would love this kind of guy uh, if possible if he is available, you know, in the, in the late like you know third fourth round or something. But I don't know. And I only say just because uh, the, the only reason I know actually Zamir White before all of this is uh, when he was graduating high school, I remember there was like some random article and, you know, they, they took a photo of Zamir White, you know, being the huge bulldog he is. And there was like, uh, this is Zamir White. Uh, he's a senior in high school and he's committed to Georgia. And everyone's like, oh, my God, get this man like a like check his ID. You know, how old is this dude, man? But he's been in like senior year for the last 20 years, blah, 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 <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So with all that being said, uh, I uh, I definitely want to look for someone a little bit more realistic. Um, and that is uh, Rashad White from Arizona State. His receiving skills were were looking real hot. All right, I'll tell you this: even even the run game is solid. But I mean, it's nothing super special. He was able to do what he was able to do. Uh, I also want to kind of add on the only kind of downside though is that with the Pac-12, uh, it was a little bit more limited. They didn't get much playing time compared to the other uh, the other leagues or the other conferences, and um, obviously with COVID and everything else like that. So that was kind of a little bummer. But from what I've seen from him, uh, you know, he can back it up for sure. Uh, it just kind of comes down to, you know, how is he going to fit in or whatever. Uh, and, uh, you know, other than that, though, uh, Tyler Beatty from Missouri uh, as well. Catching ability is there for sure. Uh, when it came to, you know, those kind of big factor third down kind of plays in college, uh, he came through big time. Uh, and, uh yeah, I'm just hoping, you know, you know, these guys, Tyler Beatty, Rashad White, you know, we're able to at least think about them or consider them uh, if they are available. But uh, then again, listen, this is number five on our list. Uh, and uh, I'm going to keep it real with you. I haven't done a lot of research on the other priority list, uh, just minus the few big names in each one of those positions in the draft class. But 
you know, this is just something we're just going to have to play it by ear a little bit. Um, maybe see as well what's going on with the uh, the free agency pool. Uh, what kind of other running backs could we get? Uh, because sometimes, you know, you, you want to look for the right talent and it's not always in the draft class. Uh, and sometimes you just need a solid depth piece and uh, experience more than anything is important. And um, that's just my only worry with any of these rookies, whether you're quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, it don't matter. It's all really just about adjusting because I'm sure I've mentioned it a million times before, gentlemen. And that is, listen, it's one thing when you're playing with like 18, 19, 20, 21 year old boys. All right. But now you're going in the league and you're playing with grown men. You're playing with dudes in their late 20s, early 30s, bigger, faster, stronger, meaner. They just want to rip your head off because guess what? That's their job. All right, they're not attending introduction to philosophy like you were back in college now. They eat, sleep, and breathe just coming after you. All right. So that's my only worry is okay, I hope you know any guy like them can adjust. But um Carter, you, you know, you mentioned Zaquandre White, but is there anyone else from the top of your head that you're thinking, okay, maybe, you know, maybe in the later rounds, okay, you know, Zaquandre White, you know, we're looking kind of a little, little sleeper pick, maybe in the fourth or something like that. But you know, maybe Maybe someone like a like a unsung hero, maybe a little hidden gem. Uh, any running back out of out of Alabama like is going to be amazing, and Brian Robinson Jr. is certainly no exception. Um, he he just the big the big drawback with him is is very much that he lacks the the burst, the athletic ability that most Bama running backs have. You look at you know Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, you know. Uh, Josh Jacobs, other guys like that, they have the the broken tackle ability. They can get out in open space and just be an absolute monster. Um, Brian Robinson Jr. is definitely more of a between the tackles guy, uh, but I don't know. He he was very productive at Alabama. Um, you look at his stats, and he was great. He reminds me a little bit of uh, Bo Scarborough a few years back at Alabama. He was very productive at Alabama. Didn't have a great NFL career. But, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really sold, like I said, on the Bucks taking a running back at all. Um, but if they do, he's not a bad guy. All right, all right. Brian Robinson. Yeah, I, I thought about him too just because I was like, yeah, he kind of was kind of in, you know, Najee Harris's shadow as well. And I was like, oh, snap. You know, when I was looking at the draft class, I was like, oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, he wasn't kind of the big talk, uh, you know, this year or something like that. Uh, a lot of other people on the Alabama roster who are looking real hot as well. I mean, like they do every year. So I, then again, I kind of take that back. But I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, I'm still going to go kind of go with those two guys. If anything, maybe uh, I'll toss in someone like Abram Smith, who's kind of maybe in the in the lower ranks of the draft class. And I only say that just because uh, – he performed really well at Baylor, uh, but then again, Pac – oh, not Pac, not Pac-12, Big 12. Big 12 football is kind of a little different style. Honestly, my only impression is that, like, Big 12, like, defense is kind of a little bit weak or something. So it just makes me think, is this something to consider? But um, I don't know. How is it going to translate? Uh, is he going to be maybe a role player, maybe even throw him in special teams? That's kind of the way I'm thinking. Um you know, listen, I'm just going to kind of, you know, just stick with it. And that is uh, I see this guy uh, possibly being, you know, available uh, in the later rounds. Definitely uh, nothing earlier than the fourth. Uh, and uh, if he's available in the seventh, uh, we got two picks in the seventh round. You know, we got a 27th pick and a 40th pick in the seventh round. Uh, so thinking about that, maybe we could uh, just, you know, risk it. But. Man, there's a lot, a lot of depth pieces. You know what I'm saying? You know, we already, we've already discussed it. We've ranked our positions by positions, and um, it just makes me think, though. You know, there, there's really got to be a special player. Uh, Santiago, uh, you know, uh, Carter and I have given a few of our players. Is there anyone else that you maybe wanted to add on? Well, I'm looking at Mac, uh, you know Max Borgi from Washington State. You know, um, so he. You know, when he played at Washington State, you know, it's obviously it's not a very uh, big conference over there. You know what I mean? The, the Pac-10. Pac-12, but, yeah. Pac-12. Um, but, you know, he has, um, you know, as a sophomore in 2019, he started all 13 games, rushing for 
817 yards on 127 carries with 11 touchdowns with the team leading 86 receptions for 597 yards and five touchdowns. So, you know, and looking at, you know, comparing to other quarterbacks, obviously I like SEC, you know, because SEC, you know, anybody from Alabama, you know, pretty much they're, they're beast of, uh, of athletes, you know what I'm saying? But, analyzing a few different conferences, a few different players. Um, yeah, he caught my attention. All right, um, all right. I like that. I like that. Uh, but, you know, I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Santiago, you got to remember, I don't know, uh, Pac-12 is looking a little interesting just because of the whole um, limited participation in games and everything like that because of COVID uh, this past season. So definitely something to consider. Uh, and uh, I'm really glad you kind of brought up the conferences because I think that's definitely something uh, to think about as well as, you know, where these guys coming from? Because obviously you're thinking, uh, do I want a running back from, like, the Mid-Atlantic Conference compared to, like, a running back from, like, you know, Bama, Georgia or something? It makes you think, but um, I like it. All right, I like it. I'll run with it. All right, so... I were uh, our last little topic is this, you know, what, what what's going on with the rest of, uh, you know, the league, but kind of just specifically, uh, I just wanted to just highlight that um, my, my, the vibe that I'm getting with, with the AFC and NFC is kind of like two different vibes. I feel like the AFC is a lot more competitive. Uh, and um, on top of that, uh, the Dolphins may or may not be more competitive. I've already dropped a few players names on here who are headed to Miami uh, but on top of that, on top of that, listeners, Tyreek Hill is headed to the Miami Dolphins for five future draft picks. All right. Uh, that is quite hefty. And uh, I only want to bring that up uh, just because there was a time, there was a time that we thought we're going to have to pay a hefty mortgage to try to get, you know, some solid quarterback or, you know, a solid quarterback and another solid, you know, player or you know at a position like maybe running back or maybe some solid defensive player we're thinking ah yikes you know should we or should we not give up a lot you know clearly we don't have to um i mean fingers crossed but uh, the way i see it right now we don't have to at all and that makes me feel awesome but it just makes me think you know how does this affect the rest of the league and uh especially um how does this make the competition uh, for the rest of the league. There's a lot of big moves going on, uh, but I want to say this one for sure was definitely an eye-opener. And, uh, Carter, you know, what are your overall thoughts on this? Yeah, like like you said, the NFC and the AFC are going in two different directions. Um, Russell Wilson is gone. Uh, Devontae Adams is with the Raiders. You know, it's just Tyree Kill is, is headed to the Dolphins. I mean, it's just instead of the NFC – I mean, the NFC is – is going to be really hard for the Bucks to lose. That's all I'll say <laughs> because the Bucks are kind of head and shoulders above every team in the NFC. I mean, the Packers are no longer – I mean, uh, of course they still have Aaron Rodgers and all that, but good Lord, who's he throwing to? Um, you know, he's, he's throwing to Randall Cobb and, you know, Robert Tunyon. I mean, I, I just – I don't really see it. And, um, yeah, the rest of the NFC hasn't really gotten much better. I mean, the Rams are still going to be there obviously, but – who man, they're still you know they're getting old and they get they lost uh, Robert Woods, they lost Odell Beckham Jr. Sure, they brought in Allen Robinson, but I don't know. I mean, it's tough to go back to back as the Bucks showed this last year. I mean, it's t- really difficult to win back to back Super Bowls. Um, and I I, I don't know. I, the AFC is looking real tough. There there are a lot of really great teams out there and. Um, the best team, arguably the Chiefs, you know, they just got way weaker. So it's it's just, you know, it's really going to be interesting to see who comes out of the AFC to, you know, hopefully meet the Bucks in the Super Bowl this season. <laughs> but I would say for sure this is like one of the craziest off seasons of all time. And it makes me think that some of these teams are also thinking about their future. They're thinking, okay, um, maybe – Maybe we kind of just need to let go of the fact that we're not going to win the Super Bowl or we're not like a true, true contender. You know, yeah, yeah, we, you know, we can make the playoffs and stuff like that, but we're, you know, we're going to have to change some things up. Maybe, uh, you know, the loss against the Bengals really 
the through the Chiefs down or something like that. But I don't know. I gotta say, you know, my theory is the NFL somehow knows that there's like a you know like a nuclear war, a Corona Ultra variant, or maybe some asteroid will strike that they make it so that you know they may never play another game. So now you know the league's just trying to squeeze as much entertainment from this final off season as possible. I don't know. A lot, a lot of crazy moves going on uh, as we just discussed it right now. The fact that the AFC is looking a lot different than the NFC. Uh, you said it yourself. Uh, it's going to be uh, hard for the Bucks to lose. Uh, and even looking at the Rams, you know, Carter and Santiago. You know, we put up a dog fight, and if anything, we came back. You know, it's not like they came back. We came back. We could have had the game in the bag if we just, you know, made the right the few right moves here and there, or if we had a few of our key players. All right, I think their roster was looking healthier than ours. Uh, so it, it's rather unfortunate, but that's okay. We're here for another year. But uh, Santiago, you know, what are your kind of overall thoughts on this? Uh, how does this affect uh, the league? How does this affect the Buccaneers? And, uh, you know, how do you feel about risking that many draft picks uh, for someone like Tyreek Hill, you know? Just imagine if we did this, Santiago. How would that make you feel if we got a key player, whether that be Tyreek Hill or, you know, um, anyone else? Now, I'll also – I just want to add on, with all due respect, Tyreek Hill was a great player, but he has, he wasn't anyone like, oh, my God, this guy's a threat threat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the guy is fast as hell for sure, all right? But it's not like I ever saw him like, oh, my gosh, you know, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, all eyes are on him only because of his speed. And, you know, yeah, he's a great player, but – it just makes me think, you know, how how much more does he have it in him, and uh, you know who who was a really who was the winner in a trade like this, Santiago, the Chiefs or the Dolphins? You know what the Chiefs have? They have Patrick Mahomes, you know, and it's tough, man. You know, I'm, well, you have you have to see who, how the front office does with their draft picks, you know what I mean? Like, they better be studying to get, to see what five players, they're not going to get them all this year, right? I mean, it's going to be spread out, but they have to see, you know, right now, who are they going to use in the, for that, you know? Because they, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that, you know, that they're letting, you know, Ty, you know Tyreek Hill's going to be down in South Beach, man. He's going to be with, you know, DJ Khaled. We the best music, you know. He's going to be like, you know, with Jennifer Lopez and all them cele- all the celebrities down there. But he, ha- he has to go play football. He can't just go party, you know what I mean? So that's the Dolphins are, you know, are wanting him to be, you know, doing his job because he's getting a lot of money, you know, a lot, a lot of money, about $120 million, you know, for four years. Man, that, that's, that's a lot, man. That is a lot of dough. Oh, yes, it is. Um, you know, um, also, you know, like the Buffalo Bills, you know, like I believe right now with these changes, you know, that the AFC is going to be super competitive. The AFC East, could, you know, to be specific, you know, with the Bills, the Dolphins, the, you know, the, the Jets and also the New England Patriots. That's going to be that's going to be what we call a dog fight right there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's going to be tough. You know, like we lost OJ Howard here at the Bucks, you know. And uh, Von Miller, you know, he left sunny California. He got his ring over there with the Rams, you know, and now he's going to go to cold, cold, cold Buffalo, you know, like it's not, it's not going to be a stadium that's going to be with a, with a dome, you know what I mean? It's, it's out in the open, you know what I mean? That's going to be snow and it's going to be white and everything, you know? So, you know, overall, you know, you know those players, they have to perform. Um, obviously with the Bucks, you know, it's going to be – a lot. I believe it's going to be us. You know, we're going to go to Super Bowl, and uh, that's what I'm saying right now. Even though it's before the draft and it's before the, you know, what we're doing is amazing. And you know, like obviously they have the Buffalo Bills. You know, I, you know, I gave the information out today. The Buffalo Bills were favored, but now with this type of moves, like what the Dolphins did, you know, can they be favored to win the AFC East and and go on to the playoffs? You know, what if it's like a Bucks versus Dolphins all Super Bowl? I don't think that's ever happened before. I don't. I cannot think about it. Like two teams from the same state playing against each other. Um, That'd be real cool. You know, you That'd know? be real cool. You know, I'd, then, I'd, I'd, fly, I'd fly myself down uh, from Boston to watch that for sure. Right. Like, I, I, I right. also got to say, though, Santiago uh, and Carter, with overall – um, you know, my kind of the only thing I kind of got out from this was, first of all, oh, my gosh, wow, they, you know, the Dolphins gave up a lot. And all right, wow, Tyreek Hill's making a lot of money. 
But it just makes me think they got a lot of pressure going on right now, the Dolphins, because everyone's like, okay, they're making moves. And because they're making moves and because they just got Tyreek Hill and they sacrificed a lot, they ought to do good. They ought to do good, and there is no excuse. So it just makes me think, what kind of pressure does the Dolphins organization have? What kind of pressure does Tyreek Hill have as well? You know, some people can kind of crack under pressure, uh, and there's going to be a lot more pressure on him uh, than obviously him being on the Chiefs because, you know, they already had a good lineup of people like Patty Mahomes. So that's just something to consider, but uh, I figured I'd just kind of share my my thoughts as well with that. Uh, just that, yeah, it was real interesting to see, and listeners and Carter and Santiago, I think we are in for a treat this off season. I got to say, for all the football fans, we are in for a treat. There's a lot going on, a lot of moves to be made. I'm really, really excited to see what, you know, how this kind of plays out uh, for the rest of this spring, summer slash preseason. And then sooner or later, listeners, the week or the day will come, the regular season will start. So hang in there. But uh, as we are wrapping it up, uh, I kind of want to hear your overall final thoughts. Uh, You know, Carter, uh, the way things are looking right now, you know, how do you feel? And then we'll go on to you, Santiago. Yeah, I mean, optimistic is a is a is an understatement um, for the Bucks. I mean, I feel like they have a shot to do something real special this season. Um, they've got, you know, a loaded roster, and the NFC South is looking real rough. Um, they're in by far and away, I think, the weakest division in football. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 looking real good. The th- things are looking up for sure. It's just so crazy to think about that. Even even without Tom Brady and all these moves, the Bucks still could have conceivably won this division because that's how bad this division was. But now it's like it's not even a question. So it's it's just yeah, it's crazy to me, and uh, real excited to see how the season plays out for him. Yeah, I don't think it's a question either, Santiago. What do you think? Yeah, you know, like actually, and I agree with what Carter just said. You know, like. It's definitely right now the weakest division in football. Um, you know, we definitely have some other than outside of our division. You know, we're playing the Chiefs this year, L.A. Rams, you know. But look at that. We're not going to have to play Von Miller. We're not going to have to play Tyreek Hill. You know, they're going to be in other divisions. So, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, I can definitely – I see us you know, going to the Super Bowl. So, I mean, I'm saying that early. I said it a couple of times, but – we are definitely the favorites in the NFC. And, you know, again, whoever's coming out of the AFC better be prepared because we're going to, you know, we ain't going to lose Super Bowl. Definitely not, you know. And it's going to be, wow. and it's going to be in Arizona this year, you know, over there at the Cardinal Stadium. So, you know, that's going to be, it's another domed uh, Super Bowl. So, you know, out in the desert. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, exci- I'm excited to, to, for NFL season to start, man, let's go. Let's do it, man. I'm, I'm super, Diablo. super excited. Oh, yeah. So am I. But I, I wish I was excited as you were, man. I love your optimism. And, and let me tell you this, listeners, March 23rd, mark the day down, get a little tattoo. Because that is when our friend Santiago said that the Buccaneers will be winning the Super Bowl. And uh, Santiago Carter, I hope that one day, or uh, I'll probably say like less than a year from now, I can look back at this podcast episode and be like, you know what? I'm sorry. Maybe Carter, Carter, we're, we're going to have to say sorry again, maybe. I'm sorry. You know, we you know, we were trying to kind of play it fair and there, you know, with the other teams. You know, we're trying to respect the other teams. But you know what, Santiago, you were right. The other teams, they can't handle the Buccaneers. All right. But listeners, if, you know, if you're still listening to us, thank you for handling RBLR. I want to thank you big time. We all do here at RBLR. We want to thank you big time for, you know, just setting some time aside and giving us a listen. We really do appreciate it. And by all means, we always appreciate your support uh, on the podcast platforms as well as our social media platforms. Uh, And just a reminder, you can follow us at RBLR Sports on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And by all means, feel free to comment, you know, some questions you have, some hot takes. We love feedback. And also, as I said it before, don't forget to like and subscribe to our podcast. 
takes like five seconds, I promise you. Whether you're on Spotify, oh my God, Musab, I don't have Spotify because I'm a Saints fan. Oh, that's okay. Okay, you probably have Apple or Google Podcast. Oh, Musab, you know what? Us Panthers and Falcons fans, we don't have Apple or Google Podcasts. Okay, no worries. We accommodate for everyone. All right. We got iHeartRadio, YouTube, and other major podcast platforms. We're everywhere. RBLR is everywhere. You can find us, and uh, we'll find you too. Well, that is all for this episode. Stay fired up, fans. Seriously, we are getting closer and closer. Let me tell you something. Three weeks from now, I was a little bummed out. I think we all were. We're thinking, oh, my gosh, what the heck's going to happen? Now look at us. We're all fired up. So more than anything, I think three weeks from today, three weeks from today, we're, we're going to be, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I, I think I'm just going to be bouncing off the wall like a little airhead. You know, you've seen those airhead ads, Carter and Santiago, where the guy starts bouncing off the wall because apparently he wasn't being nice to the airhead rapper. <laughs> he starts going berserk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I, I am nothing but optimistic to see uh, what our organization is doing just because we really are making the right moves. Surely our players are amazing, uh, but I, I also want to give a big credit to our front office and uh, a big credit to, again, uh, everyone, the fans, the listeners, and as well as Santiago and Carter as well. So that is all. See you next time. And as always, listeners... Go Bucks. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.